FYF Sports Series, Lamont, man, we back with another video. Today, as you can see here, man, we geared up for the playoffs, man, and this is when it all matters, man. This is this is when teams shorten their rosters, or shorten their lineups, shorten their rotations, and this is when FanDuel gets really, really interesting, man, in the playoffs. And the playoffs will be starting in less than 24 hours. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going, we're going to be breaking down our FanDuel lineup for Monday. As you guys can see right here, our Monday lineup, we're going to be walking through one of our lineups, how we select our players, who we like for the day, uh, and we'll just go from there. Hopefully, we can win big. Uh, if Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell before we get started. Uh, we love all the engagement. And again, if you guys got any FanDuel lineups, if you got any tips and strategies, if you got any players that you like, make sure that you're hitting us up in the comments or on Twitter or on Instagram. Let us know who you like. Let us know what you think, man. And again, if you got a very unique or interesting perspective, we can bring you onto the show. We can we can do a lineup with you, um, or we can just kind of show you how we break down our lineups live and direct. Um, but we're not gonna waste any time, man. I know you guys have been wanting another FanDuel video. You guys have been asking me for it in the comments. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Now, first thing we always want to look at, um, as you can see right here, the first thing we always want to look at is we want to look at the games that are being played. All right, so we got four games. We got four games being played tomorrow. That's a decent slate of games. That's a decent slate of games that's gonna give you a wide array of players and it's gonna give you some diversity in your picks. So there are gonna be some, some positions where you can take chances. There are gonna be other positions where you might not wanna take so many chances, but we're gonna go ahead and break it down right here. So now we're gonna look at our, um, when we look at our matchups, are there any teams to avoid? Are there teams to avoid? Are there matchups to avoid? Right here, I'm looking at the Dallas Clipper matchup. Um, the Clippers are one of the better defensive teams in the NBA. Um, man, it's going to be tough picking those Dallas players. They got a lot to go up against against that Clipper team first game of the playoffs. Um, another matchup I want to look at is to Toronto Raptors in Brooklyn. Man, that Brooklyn team, they're already shorthanded. They're going to be going up against a very defensively stout Toronto Raptors team. So I'm going to be mindful of the players that I select on Brooklyn. I'm going to be mindful of the players that I select on Dallas. Again, this is one of the first things I have to analyze when I'm making my lineup. And so with that being understood, we can go into making some of our selections. Um, and, and what we like to do is, you know, in, some, in this lineup, my strategy for this particular lineup is I want to go for balance um, across the board. And, and what I like to, you know, when I'm when I'm really creating a lineup where I say I want to win with this particular lineup, my goal is I want to be able to say, can this particular player that I've selected, can they exceed 40 Fanduel points on this particular evening? Whether it's a lower value player or it's a higher value player, based on their usage, based on how, how they're going to be utilized for that given game, can they exceed their value? Can they exceed their value by how much? And that's one of the big things we're gonna have to really look at as we create this lineup right here. All right, so we're gonna scroll down. So the first thing we're gonna start with, you know how we like to do it. We like to go from point guard to center, and then we kind of bounce from position to position. That way we don't get stuck looking at the same players for a long period of time. So um, as I scroll through these point guards right here, we're gonna scroll through these point guards right here. Obviously we see our top point guards of the day, Kyle Lowry, Jamal Murray, Kimba Walker. Uh, Kimba Walker's back now. So again, I know Kimba Walker during those eight bubble games, he was under a minutes restriction. He is no longer under minutes restriction. So again, you want to be mindful of that. Don't you don't necessarily have to shy away from Kimba. Um, he's he's there's no minutes restriction, but you want to consider the pros and the cons of why you would select Kimba Walker um, if you choose to do so in your particular lineup. Mike Conley Jr. is going to be out. He his um, he's going to be attending the birth of his son, so he's out of the bubble right now. So that takes away really the only true point guard on that Utah Jazz roster. So there are going to be other guys with elevated uses that we want to be mindful of. Obviously, Pat Beverly, we don't know if he's 100% healthy yet. Shake Milton starting point guard for the 76ers. And then we have a host of other guards below there. But, but for me, 
Um, for you know, the first player that I saw, based on how he's been playing, his consistency, his usage, his his how he plays on both ends of the court, my first pick at point guard has to be Kyle Lowry. Got to go with Kyle Lowry. I love I love his play. Um, he, he's been able to put up a lot of points, and he's been able to fill up FanDuel stats because he gets steals and in and the occasional block. And as a point guard, when any point guards can give you blocks, you take that all day. Um, but again, we're one of the best defensive teams in the league. Um, I got to go with Kyle Lowry. Now, there's always cons to selecting any player. The only con to this particular pick is that the Toronto Raptors could potentially blow the Brooklyn Nets out. And if there's a blowout, his, his minutes or his usage could be shortened, especially into that fourth quarter, where a lot of these players are masked the, mo the majority of their FanDuel points. But I think, I think Brooklyn is going to be competitive in this first playoff game. I don't necessarily be in it a, see, it, see it being a blowout, so I'm going to go with Kyle Lowry as we switch over to the center position. Center position, we got a number of good selections here. Um, the top selections of the day are going to be Jokic, Joel Embiid, Rudy Gobert, and Jared Allen. Now, those are all very solid picks. When we go below that to our second tier guys, Montrez Harrell, we don't know he's going to be back. He's game time decision. We got Ivan Zubak, Chris Bosher. Mark Gasol, and even Boban Morjanovic. And then we have our third guy, tier guys below that. I don't think at the center position you'll need to necessarily go that low today, um, especially with it being playoff basketball. So um, who has the best matchup? Well, we got Jokic. Jokic has played well against Rudy Gobert for whatever reason. I think it's primarily because he's able to take Rudy Gobert to that high post and operate from there, as opposed to just working against him at the low block where Rudy Gobert thrives defensively. So uh, Nikola Jokic could be a great pick today. He's he's priced well. Normally Jokic is the guy that's priced over ten thousand. For whatever reason, they have him at eighty six hundred along with Joel Embiid. Um, so those would be two great picks. Um, upside upside to Jokic. He can have a monster game. Same with say same with Joel Embiid and Rudy Gobert. And and, and, the, and the good thing about these guys not being priced, the good thing about these guys not being priced over 10k. The the main thing that I like is that it doesn't kill you if they don't exceed their if you know if they don't get 50 or 60 Fanduel points. It doesn't necessarily kill you. You know, guys priced at about 8600. You want to see them in that 40. 40 point FanDuel range. Hopefully they can get to the 50s or 60s and really make your lineup stout. Um, but again, you just have to go with your best guess. But the matchup that I like most, um, the matchup that I do like most is I do like Zubak against Dallas with this particular matchup right here. And also with Montrez Harrell not being 100%. Um, I like Jared Allen, his effectiveness on the court. Um, I'm going to have to go with Nikola Jokic at, at this pick. Because, again, with Joel Embiid playing off an ankle injury, um, he's also playing against a Boston team that he struggled against in the past. Uh, I, I don't necessarily know if I'm 100% um, sold on Joel Embiid right now. Uh, but I do like Jokic. Uh, and with his price differential, you know, that price differential isn't much. You could you can interchange Joel Embiid and Jokic. You know, if you, if you like your lineup and you're not for sure on the center, just create two of the same lineups. And just have one with Jokic, have one with Embiid. And that's what I would do. I think that's what I would do in this particular situation because I'm so unsure on both of them. All right, next up, we're going to shooting guard, shooting guard. Now, we got Luka Doncic. I told you that's a matchup I, I want to worry about. I don't really necessarily like that matchup against the Clippers. We saw him struggle against the Clippers earlier this year with a 16-point output. Uh, they defensively were able to slow him down. We got Karis LeVert going up against another very, very good defensive team in the Toronto Raptors. Again, not, not too sure on uh, how much I would buy in on Karis LeVert. The, the good thing with Karis LeVert is he has high usage. They're going to go to him a lot. There's really not too many guards on that roster that can come in and do what he does. So he's going to get a lot of minutes. Brooklyn's really, really going to want to come out and try to win this first game. I know they don't want to go down to the Toronto Raptors. So I can see Karis LeVert coming out having a very, very solid game. And for that reason right there, I'll be going with Karis LeVert as my shooting guard pick. Although we have some other shooting guards here. Now we have Donovan Mitchell. Um, we have Fred Bland V. These guys, you know, Donovan Mitchell has more usage uh, with Mike Conley out. Uh, Marcus Smart, less usage now that Kimba Walker's off minutes restriction. We got Lou Williams, who's been playing better basketball as well. 
All right, so we're going to go to my small forward pick. We haven't looked at the small forwards of the day. At the top, we got Kawhi Leonard, uh, Siakam, Tobias Harris, Jalen Brown, Gordon Hayward, and Tim Hardaway Jr. Now, again, Tim Hardaway Jr. is definitely a player I want 100% stay away from today. Um, this man did, does not thrive in games where he's playing uh, defensively consistent or very good teams. Um, he, he, he He's a... Uh, a three-point shot maker uh, against a team like the Clippers. They're very, very good at taking away the three-point shot. I'm not sure how effective he will be, but Tim Hardaway Jr. can surprise you. But for this particular lineup, I'm going to stay away from Tim Hardaway Jr. Um, I actually like Tobias Harris. Uh, with Ben Simmons out, his usage is going to be increased. Uh, I like his ability to score the ball, especially against um, – this Celtic team that over the course of the last eight games, they have struggled defensively mightily. So I do like Tobias Harris at that particular matchup. We're going to go into power forge. Power forge, we have Christoph Porzingis, who's game time decision. Now, you don't want to run from that game time decision designation for Porzingis. Um, I just think that's um, that's just there because he, he is dealing with a heel issue. I don't know if that's going to prevent him from playing. Um, if I had to take a guess, I would say go ahead and pick Porzingis for now. Make sure you check back about 30, 20, 30 minutes before the game start so you can get that pick changed if he is out. Um, Jason Tatum, I like him, but again, he's vying for usage with Gordon Hayward, Jalen Brown, and Kimball Walker. Also, Marcus Smart when he decides to go score the ball. So again, I, I don't know how bought, I, bought in I am on Jason Tatum because I don't know what his usage will be. Michael Porter Jr. is the hot hand. When this man plays over 30 minutes, um, as of late, he's been putting up monster, monster FanDuel games. Uh, and then we got Daniel Tice. Uh, he can play. He's a serviceable big. He's one of those bigs that can surprise you and give you some decent numbers out of the blue. Um, so, you just, again, you will always want to keep your eye on him. Um, you know, as you round your lineup out, if, if you're around about – you know, 5,500 remaining, you may want to consider this guy. All right, we got, other, we got our other third-tier guys, Jeremy Grant, Royce O'Neal, and Paul Millsap. I'm not sold on any of those guys today. Um, so um, the player that I would go with here, um, so I'm looking at my – so you, obviously you can scroll up to the top right here, and you can see your average salary remaining, how much money you got left. So I got, I'm at about 57.40 per player. I think – I think for this lineup, I'm going to go with uh, Michael Porter Jr. So now, as you can see here, we have five of our picks made. We got four more picks to go. Um, and again, I'm, I want to do my best to try not to overthink it. And again, with this lineup right here, we're going for balance. So again, there's not really going to be too many home run picks, but we're going to just go for balance. I think to, I think tomorrow's slate is going to be about balance. Uh, and so my first pick, I'm going back to my point guard selection is, again, Jamal Murray is just one of those guards where um, he can he can explode for a big night or he can disappear for it, you know, completely and, and just destroy your fan, fantasy lineup. Uh, uh, not fairly too for sure on how Kimba's going to perform. I think Kimba can maybe, maybe uh, get slightly above 30 FanDuel points. I just don't think that's going to be strong enough to get you um, into the money or any serious money on FanDuel. I like Shake Milton uh, starting, going against that Boston defense, and going against Kimball Walker. You know, he struggled defensively. Uh, so, that being said, I think I'm going to go with Shake Milton at my point. Now, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm buying down a little bit. I, I picked a player who was under my average player money value right here. So, now that increases what I have to spend on other guys. Um, so I'm going to go to that power forward position again. Like I said before, I like to bounce back and forth, all right, just to kind of switch up my pits. So I actually have to go back to thinking, all right. And so now we know that we're at 5,900 player. Um, our previous pick, Michael Porter Jr. I think that I'm going to go with. Yeah, I've been thinking about this a lot as well. Um, and this is primarily because I don't think that Dallas is going to use Boban Marvjanovic too much. I don't think that the Clippers are going to rely on Ivan Zubik too heavy. I think they're going to rely more on Marcus Morris to, to defend in this game. So I'm going to go with Mark, uh, Marcus Morris. I like him. Uh, he's played great. The last game against, against that he played against Dallas in the bubble, he went for 28.5. 
uh, Fanduel points. I potentially think he could see can exceed that um, with his ability to defend. Uh, all we need is again a player like that for a player. All we need is for a player like that just to get a few steals and a few blocks, and I can turn that 28.5 into 40 or 39. That's what you really need right here. So I'm hoping Marcus Morris has a, very, a really good game. All right, we're gonna go back to shooting guard. Shooting guard. Um, another tricky day. I definitely in this particular lineup, we don't have the money to go for Luka Doncic, even though he's a player. I would highly recommend that you stay away from today. Primarily because of his cost, and if he doesn't pan out and give you those big monster numbers, it's just going to completely destroy that lineup and make it extremely hard for you to win money. Uh, we got Paul George priced very low. I'm surprised to see Paul George priced under Karis LeVert. Then we got Donovan Mitchell. Um, I like Fran Van Vliet as well. I think Fran Van Vliet is just going to be one of those players today that just kind of gets slept on and could potentially have a really, really big game. So make sure you're not looking over Fred Van Vliet too often. Um, Donovan Mitchell, he, he just scares me sometimes because he only gives points. Doesn't really give much in, in all of these other stat categories. So it's hard for Donovan Mitchell to get over 40 unless he's scoring at least 30 points. Um, I don't like to necessarily rely on that because those points can come and go. So I think I'm going to go with Fred Van Vliet for this particular pick. Now, I like Fred Van Vliet's defense. I like his ability to pass. I like his ability to score. So he has that balance attack that's extremely good for FanDuel players. All right, my last pick is that small forward. Now, we see how much money we have left. We have 6,400 remaining. So now we, we have a limited number of small forwards that we can go to, but we actually have some very solid power forwards that we can choose from within that price range. Uh, we have Jalen Brown and Gordon Hayward, probably not gonna consider Tim Hardaway Jr. too heavily today based on who they're playing. Uh, now, my selection here is gonna be solely based on who's just been playing better recently. And the player that's been playing better recently is Gordon Hayward. That's who I would have to go with. Um, now, again, with these Celtics players, it's all a toss-up, whether it's Jalen um, Brown, Gordon Hayward. Um, they have so many guys that can score the ball on that particular team. It's hard to take a, a clear guess as to who is going to have the best night. You know, is it going to be Jason Tatum? Is it going to be Daniel Tice? So there's so many weapons on that team. I just got to go with Gordon Hayward because he does so much in other categories as well. So he may not perform on the points in as heavily, but I can count on him for rebounds, blocks, and steals. And that's, that'll usually push him over 30 as well. So we're going to run down the lineup really quick. Point guard, Kyle Lowry. Other point guard, Shake Milton. Karis LeVert, Flavon and Bleak. Tobias Harris, Gordon Hayward, Michael Porter Jr., Marcus Morris, and Nikola Jokic. A very, very solid balanced lineup. And the one thing that can tell you that this is balanced is that almost every player that we've selected is a starter. The only player that's borderline starter is going to be Marcus Morris. And I think Doc Rivers is still trying to decide whether he wants to start him or not. So he could potentially start as well. So I like this lineup right here. It's extremely balanced. Uh, well, let's go ahead and make sure we enter this. So all we got to do is just enter the lineup. Once we enter the lineup, we're good to go. Now, after Monday's over, we're going to come back Monday night. We're going to see how this particular lineup did. Hopefully, the lineup won his money. If it didn't, we'll just go back to the drawing board and get ready for Tuesday. FYF Sports to open another great fan duel. Fan duel pick selection video. Hope you guys love the picks. I uh, hope you guys love the strategy. Again, if you guys got any questions or concerns for me, make sure you reach out to me in the comments. Make sure you reach out to the comments or on Instagram or Twitter. Uh, let us know in the DMs. Send us screenshots of your lineups if you win, if you lose. We'll, we'll do our best to help you. But again, at the end of the day, it's FanDuel. It's always somewhat of a risk. Uh, you don't want to find yourself investing too much in, into it. If you find yourself getting mad or just kind of getting outside of yourself, just step away from it. Don't necessarily play. Maybe skip a day or two and then come back to it. Because the one thing that I know is consistent with FanDuel is if your mind is not into it, if you're rushing your picks, if you're making a lineup at the last minute, um, if you're upset, you're going to make errors. You're going to pick, pick players that you normally wouldn't. You're going to look over players that you normally select, and you'll shoot yourself in the foot. So make sure you just got a clear mind. Make sure, you, make sure um, you're not all stressed out. Make sure you're, when you do your lineups, you can actually also do some counter research with it as well. You know, go to basketballreference.com. 
Look at players' histories. Look at how they match up head-to-head -head against certain teams. You know, what are their tendencies? Do they tend to score more on this team? Do they, you know, do they, do they get less minutes against this team? These are all things you're going to want to consider when you're putting together your fan duel lineup. So, again, we got our entry set. Hopefully, you guys, you know, hopefully you guys can do good with your lineups. Um, we, you know, we wish everyone the best. I hope everyone can get a check from FanDuel. Uh, FYF Sports, make sure, again, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. But it's a wrap for this video, and I'm out.